About the crystal. Remember how I said it was locked away? Uh, yeah. They really don't allow anyone near the thing. The Emperor himself never got close to it. The lab rats had a theory that the crystal posed some kind of threat to the demons. The way they see it? That's the reason the Chancellor had the Emperor go after it in the first place. Hmm. Dunno, but that theory holds water in my book. Yeah? Prince Noctis, were... were you excited to marry Lady Luna Freya? Because she was really excited to marry you. She looked so happy the day her dress arrived. She really loved you, Prince Noctis. I... <sighs> Thank you. At first, the father had mourned the fate of his chosen son. Yet in Tenebrae, the two found solace. It was not the Oracle who assuaged their fears. But the girl, she holds the true power. I have little to offer a king other than the voice afforded the Oracle. Nevertheless, and I'm afraid you might find this foolish. But, to be together with Noctis again, even if only for a short while, it would mean the world to me. I do not seek to guide him, merely to stand beside him. Freya worried she was burdening you with the wedding. That's not true, is it? No, not at all. Did we ever see the dark? <sighs> what has become of our world? 
been dark for so long. Oh, looks like the night will never end. How in the world could something like this happen? Perhaps this is the way it ends. It sounds like the lab in Grawley is a real mess. Wouldn't surprise me. I wonder where Emperor Edoloss went off to. Somewhere six feet. Have a home to go back to. Ready to depart. Just swapped out the damage cars for some new ones. Give one of us a holler when you're ready to shove off, then. Dining cars open. If you need a break. Shall we shove off then? Climb aboard. Don't worry about the civilians. They're in my good hands. Can't say the same for you. Watch yourselves in the capital. We will. <laughs> Thanks, Arnea. We'll see you around. It's... snowing. Get your ass on board! Yes, sir. Look at all that snow. No wonder it's so cold in here. We must be approaching the Glacian's cadaver. Won't be a blessing if all we got's a body. Let us hope we pass through the gorge without incident. It's what's after the gorge I'm worried about.
How could this be? Hey, what's up? Okay, thanks for letting us know. I wonder what it could be this time. Attention, Dad. Yeah? What's wrong? You may have noticed we stopped. As for the cause, outside the village... We'll take a look. Oh, no. I hope it's just a quick snow shoveling job. Indeed. It's freezing. You better keep moving to stay warm. The Glacian did this. I think I can see her. It's a shame. She's lying dead. It's cold. Let's clean up out of here. Warm up in there. Better make this snappy. What's up? You better get in here. Something's Got not it. right. Come on, there in a sack. Right. No way. You hold it. That son of a bitch. Ah! 
your friends. They've fallen and they can't get up. Why not lend them a hand? A coldness that can only be hers. Guarded this star since time immemorial, each of a different mind, but united by this common purpose. The gods' protection extends to all creatures here below, even to the mortals created in their image. They are feeble creatures leading fragile lives and clinging to foolish fancies. The Frostbearer scorns these visions of hope, which melt like snow in the sun's light. Yet the pyre burner admires their strength of will. For their reverence, he grants unto them his flame, and the world of man flourishes. His benevolence warms the frozen heart of the frost bearer. The mortals have earned her respect, he, her love and admiration. It is not long, however, before some among those men ascend to new heights of hubris. The people of Solheim spurn the gods who bless them the gods they once worshipped. The ungrateful mortals incur the wrath of the pyre burner. He seeks to raise the very civilization his flames once helped build. But the six are sworn to defend this star and all her inhabitants from harm, and, at times, from one another. The flames of war surge as Solheim fends off the pyre burner's fire. The gods' pleas for peace fall on deaf ears, and the battle rages on. When the smoke clears, the world of man is in ruins, their star left scarred for time eternal. Wearied from war, the six seek solace in slumber. This tale of our shared past is entrusted to the King of Kings, that he may see it to its conclusion. In the days that follow the war, while the six are still asleep, the pyre burner is sought by a man who draws him away from the light. His peril is sensed by the frost bear. She rushes to his aid, only to be felled by the foreign hordes. Those masses are now one with the darkness, darkness that before long will swallow the six and the star they protect. This star's fate no longer rests in the hands of the gods. It sits on the shoulders of the Chosen. Deliver this world from darkness and grant my love release. I promise I will. 
The Oracle is no longer of this world, but her thoughts remain, and they must be known. When the boy begins his existence on this star, the girl is met by the High Messenger. It is ordained that she will work with him to return the light. The girl reaffirms that promise. The High Messenger is moved by the girl's determination, her heart warmed by the girl's benevolence. Her faith in mankind is restored once more. Sister, cease this madness. That boy will never be king. Noctis is chosen. It is ordained. You of all people should know. I know that you are throwing your life away. That may be. But it's my choice. If only... If only I could hear his voice once more. If we could laugh together as we did as children. <laughs> if we could live out our days together as we once dreamed. Wherefore does the lady weep? Forgive me. I vowed to only cry where prying eyes cannot see the tears in mine. Yet others need not hide their grief. Is she so different from them? No. She is no different at all. She wants exactly what they do. To be with the one she loves. But want though she may. It is not to be. The lady's thoughts have been hurt. The love she bears the king shall never fade. And, in time, her feelings shall be known unto him. Gentiana. And if the words are not spoken from her lips, then the messenger shall see that they are heard. The god's favor and the lady's love shall be with him evermore. Thus it is promised between the Oracle and her familiar. I am undeserving of your kindness. Thank you. is fulfilled. As her words go with him, so shall my blessing. Yeah. Thanks. O King of Kings, restore the light unto this world. Farewell, dear Noctis. Luna, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I couldn't be there for you. Not even when you needed me most. There was so much you wanted to say. So much I wanted to say. And now,
I won't let you down. I know you won't. Saw the glacier. It's okay. She's gone now. You guys check out our drivers. Got it. You good? Yes, I'm fine. Let's go. I feel I've earned the right to call you not. <laughs> For a moment I felt death's chill wind. Such is the might of the gods. But then I remembered I'm immortal. Such is my blessing and curse. Your attack hurt me nevertheless. My feelings at least. And after all the memories we've shared, remember this. Ah, I should have asked if you remember him. Truly a blast from the past. Nay. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. You mustn't take what's not yours. Where is he? He? <laughs> the little gunman's a short shot away. Where? Where else but Gralia, the seat of the Empire? I'm sure he'll be delighted to see you. And you might even find your crystal. With all these demons about, you could certainly use it. <laughs> Off you go then. I wouldn't want to keep you from your friend. <laughs> We should be drawing close to Gralia. Yeah. I can't imagine what it'll be like. Swarming with demons, but you knew that. Huh. <laughs> Don't remind me. Once we arrive, we'll make for the Keep. The Keep? Zegnortus, an Imperial megafortress said to be impregnable. With Prompto and the crystal inside it. What goes in must come out. So, are we buying the story that the crystal can purge demons? The proof is in the purging, but it does stand to reason. We've observed that as the nights have grown longer, the demon hordes have grown stronger. If they are in fact averse to the crystal's light, it could save not only Lucis, but the world. 
We'll find out once we take it back. The hell? What is it? My guess. Something to sidetrack us. before we run out of room to run. Got a better idea? We trade the train for the regalia. Come on! On my way! Locked! The freight car! Keep moving! Strap in. Yeah. Threat upgraded. Activating level four security measures. Sealing all gates. Put the pedal to the metal. That's the idea. Don't crash. Thanks for the tip. Where are we now? Inside a tunnel. On the train tracks! Don't slow down, or they'll catch us up! Going as fast as I can! Hang on! That's all she's got. It'll do. Seriously marching into the capital empty-handed. 
And with no assurances, the crystal can beat back the demon hordes. Guess we'll find out the hard way. No turning back now, right? <sighs> This thing could come down at any time. Let's be quick. Come on, this way. Hey! Ignis! Gladio! Like it's connected below. Might be my ticket to the top. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Nice. That's the way to the elevator taken care of. Be safe to rest here. The research lab has been devoid of human life for several weeks. Demons once kept in captivity have been sighted outside the compound, suggesting a security breach. An outbreak could have dire implications for Gralia's city center. And all communications with the facility are still down. Meanwhile, the Imperial Railway remains paralyzed, and services within Accordo suspended. 